Hello boys and girls. I thought we'd start out with a little journal writing about Junie B. Jones and some sneaky peeky spying. I know that everybody's excited to learn what happens in the very last chapter of Junie B. Jones. So I thought we'd start with that and you could do a little writing when we finish. Chapter eight, Grandparents Day. Now if you've forgotten, Junie B's supposed to be baking cookies to bring for Grandparents Day before she got into all that trouble at the grocery store. Mrs. went back to room nine. That's because the bell rang to start kindergarten, of course. Only principal didn't let me go too. He said to stay in my wood chair. Then he called mother on the telephone. He told her all about the grocery store and also about my sneaky peeky spying. Principal is a squealer. After that, mother said she wanted to talk to me. Only when I said hi, she didn't even say hi back. She said she wasn't very happy with me, Missy, and no more spying means no more spying, and we would talk about this after her work. Then Mother said she never wants to get any more phone calls from Principal. Did I understand? Did I? Did I? I looked at Principal. Mother says not to call her anymore, I told him. Then Mother did a loud groan in the phone, except I don't know why. After that, me and her hanged up, and Principal said I could go to room nine. So I run speedy quick. Only too bad for me because I got there too late. The glass, too late to sing. My country tizzy the sweet land of liver free, which is my favorite flag song. You see right here, she's not singing the right words. And so I just had to sit down at my table, that's all. And I showed Lucille my Band-Aid. See, my head's not blowed up, I said very happy. Too bad, that said a mean boy named Jim. I made a fist at him. Then me and him got into a scuffle. Scuffle is a school word for, I accidentally tore his shirt. Only guess what? I didn't even get in trouble. Cause just then, Grandparents Day came to room nine for Grandparents Day. Hey, there's mine, there's mine, I hollered very excited. Mine is the grandpa with the baldy head. Mine too, said a girl named Charlotte. Mine too, said my boyfriend named Ricardo. Then a grandma with blonde hair came in and she had on long red fingernails and dangling earrings with the jewels on them. That's my Nana, said Lucille. I smiled at her. Your Nana looks like money bags, Lucille, I said. After that, another grandma came in, and she run over to that Jim I hate, and she tried to hug him very tight. Only that mean Jim just kept on standing there, and he didn't even hug her back. I tapped on her. I will hug you, I said. And so the me and her hugged real tight. I hate your grand boy, I said very sweet. Just then, Mrs. clapped her loud hands together, and she made the grandparents sit down in the back of the room. Then the children all talked about what we do in room nine. It is fun here, said my bestest friend, that Grace. We learn to count and to read and to wash our hands after we go to the bathroom. And we learn recess and snacks and art, said Ricardo. Art is my favorite, I called out. Only my art didn't get hanged up because I painted a horse and his head turned out like a fat wiener sausage. So I had to tear it up and stomp on it with my shoes. Then that mean Jim did a cuckoo sign at me. There they are talking. And there she is giving him a hug, his grandma a hug. And it was right in front of the whole entire grandparents. Yeah, only everybody makes mistakes, I said. Right, right, Mrs., right? Because on Saturday, you kissed a strange man at the grocery store, and then you stole a bunch of grapes, and so even teachers make mistakes, right? Mrs. Face went funny. Then her skin turned the color of reddish, and her voice couldn't say any words. How come you're not talking, Mrs.? I hollered out. Does the dead cat got your tongue? Just then, Grandma Miller made a loud laugh in the back of the room. Then I heard my grandpa laugh, too. And pretty soon, lots of other grandparents were laughing and laughing. Hey, it sounds happy in this place, I hollered. After that, Mrs. didn't look so reddish anymore. Then we got out the freshmen's, and Grandma Miller helped me put my cookies on a plate. Mrs. made an announcement to room nine, and she said only two cookies apiece for the children, except for I ate four delicious chocolate ones, and nobody even saw me. Only that's not called stealing, that's called extras. After the freshmen's, the grandparents had to go home to their houses, and so I hugged my grandma and grandpa very much. And then I hugged that mean Jim's grandma too, and also Lucille's money bags, Nana. Love your earrings, I said. Then Mrs. saw me being polite, and she smiled very nice at me. Mrs. has white teeth. 
they're just like Grandma, Grandpa Miller's teeth, only hers don't come out, I think, except for not sure, not for sure positive. So guess what? I still wish I could hide in her hamper. That's all. And that is the end to our story, Junie B. Jones and some sneaky peeky spying. So what I want you to do is I want you to get a piece of paper at your house and I want for you to write down three sentences to take a guess what you would see if you came to my house and could sneaky peeky spy on me, your teacher. I'd like to see three sentences and I want you to make sure that if you're using a sight word or a spelling word that you're taking your time to make sure it's spelled correctly. If you came to school, hopefully you were able to get your green words I use when I write book along with your other books. If you weren't able to come up here, perhaps your parents can come on another day or you can just use a dictionary at your house or a grown up or maybe the internet on your phone if that helps. So that's our first assignment and I can't wait to see it. I'll have more instructions when I send this out. So please look back at the instructions that were sent out with your parent. I hope to see y'all soon. Bye-bye.